It was UConn's annual trip to the White House, and Dan Hurley and company did not disappoint. You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube, as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Before we dive into today's show, I just want to take a moment to ask for a small favor. If you're enjoying the content here, please take a second to subscribe to the show and follow the audio versions wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever. It really helps the show grow, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that support. It keeps us going strong every day. It also, every follow, Every subscription or download of this podcast helps create more revenue for the UConn NIL as we are giving a 10% donation of Bleeding Blue for Good. So by supporting Locked on UConn, you are directly affecting the UConn athletic program. So we appreciate that partnership with Bleeding Blue for Good and Jared Thomas. So thank you so much for being a part of this community, Locked on UConn. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate College HC, Ultimate College Football HC. It's a brand new mobile game that is completely free, has no ads and is 100% playable offline. Begin your coaching legacy today. Well, in an unforgettable moment, the 2024 NCAA champion UConn men's basketball team was honored again at the White House by President Joe Biden. The Huskies, fresh off their second consecutive national championship, were praised by the president for their dominance and their contribution to an already established legacy of UConn basketball. During the ceremony, Biden congratulated congratulated Coach Dan Hurley and his team, recognizing them as the Blue Bloods of basketball. So he just got my vote if he was running, but I I, I digress. Um, He jokingly promised more championships in their future under Hurley's leadership, and I think that's one of the smartest things that Joe Biden has ever said. I think what it showed for Dan Hurley, and and we'll talk about some of the quotes from articles I've read about about the trip, um, we reached out to Joe Aruda, uh, who was there. Uh, he's traveling back today, so he couldn't come on the show. But, um, you know, I, I really want him to come on and talk about the experience. It's got to be a, a pretty exciting experience for a uh, reporter to go to the White House, you know, anyway. So, but to do it with the team that you're covering had to be extra special. So we'll get we'll get the the skinny and the, the firsthand account from, from Joe. But I think what Dan uh, alluded to was that it was kind of a bittersweet reunion because, you know, you got Donovan Kling in there, you know, fresh off being drafted by the Blazers, Steph Castle coming out, you know, they all gathered probably for the last time uh, before heading off to the NBA training camps that they're, that they're all going to be about. And also, you know, the other guys returning to school. So as much as the event was, you know, celebrating their accomplishments, it was kind of like, it's kind of like a, um, you know, high school reunion. You get excited about seeing everybody that you, that you know, Maybe you, you know, talk about you know back in the day and the things you accomplished together, but then once it's over, everyone goes back to their lives. So, you know, Coach Hurley and his staff uh, also, we'll talk about it later in the show, continue to recruit <laughs> fresh off the uh, the White House trip for the the next chapter of guys who will be continually going to the White House. So it, it was an incredible uh, affair. So the team now focuses and in, is in shifting their 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 direction, if you will to what is in front of them. And no matter how many times we talk about this, it's still incredible to talk about. I've spent the majority of the last couple of days recording what we call evergreen shows for my impending uh, paternity leave with my wife having her baby and uh, me taking some time away from this show and, and regular work. And so one of the things I've been doing is looking back at our national championship teams. So this visit is a is a is a is a wonderful example of of these guys coming together and celebrating an amazing accomplishment. And there's some there's some pretty cool quotes from President Biden, from President from from President Hurley, from Coach Hurley, um, and others that were there. And um, I think it's a it it's safe to say that these two years. With them visiting, uh, they've they've enjoyed themselves, and it doesn't doesn't lose its its awe or awe factor really. Then you know just because you've done it a few times, um, because <laughs> Dan in his classic just way, he was like, "This is scariest." Can't say you know what I, you know what he said. 
referring to being at the White House for the second year in a row. Um, and he apologized for for cursing. No one seemed to care. So, you know, Hurley reflecting on, you know, some of the challenges ahead, you know, later in life, we'll maybe we'll appreciate what we did. But at this point, the last thing we're ever thinking about is what we did. It's the next recruit, the next practice, you know, coming season. It's why he's so successful and why this program is continue is going to continue to be a top program in the country, if not the, the top program ever. You know, I, I, I know that the top program before people say, well, you don't think they're the top program. I could hear people in my YouTube comments, you know, saying that I said that I did not. This team is the best team in college basketball, best program in college basketball, bar none, and arguably um, considered one of the top, if not the top best program in, in history with what they've done. Um, this speaks to the culture of the team. That. All Dan Hurley said that Donovan, Steph, and Tristan wanted to know was how are and Cam, how are all the guys doing with the team that's playing this year? No one's talking about their NBA teams. No one's, you know, maybe they did that in private conversation, but uh, you know what Hurley was saying is that team dynamic hasn't left. Um, you know, they're asking about all of the guys that returned, the new guys, like you know, how what's what's the team look like, you know, coming up because they're le- they want their legacy to continue. Um, and I thought this was the best quote from Joe Biden in the entire speech. Coach, you said yet UConn has been running college basketball for 30 years. I should have been wearing that shirt. With you at the helm, I think they better get ready for another 30. So I love that uh, that quote from, from President Biden. Um, and I'm just so excited about this upcoming season. It's just a nice thing to really see them enjoying the fruits of their labor for, for a second. But again... If there's ever a microcosm of why this program is so good, it's that these guys, and we'll get to it in the third segment, left the White House and went and started recruiting right away. They went and saw Eric Reby, or Reby. I keep saying it's it's Reby. Damn it. I keep saying his name wrong. Sorry. Eric, come to come to UConn. I will learn your name and I'll say it right every time. And they went to see a Caden Lewis, um, who who is, you know, 30 minutes away from that, from that, you know, where he plays basketball in, in high school. So and where he's from. So really cool of these guys to take the time out and actually enjoy what they accomplished last year and be recognized for it. But as the saying goes, foot on gas, no breaks, baby. And that's that's this UConn program. Coming up, we'll talk about the non-conference schedule got released. I've seen some criticism of it. I will give you my opinion and what I think their record is. We'll go through it. The 11-game non-conference. Big East is being teased. We play Xavier in the Big East home opener. So we'll get that that information as it as it uh, trickles out coming up after this. What's up, everybody? Let's take a moment to give you a heads up on a brand new mobile game that I think you're going to love as much as I do. It's the ultimate college football HC. In this amazing game and simulation, you get, a, you get to step into the shoes of a head coach, lead your college football program to glory. Can you imagine actually being the head coach of UConn football? They look good last week. From recruiting players and hiring coaches, coaching staff, to overseeing training camps and handling all the scholarships, you control every crucial detail of your program. It's all in your hands. And will you be able to handle that pressure? And here's what I really love about the game. You are responsible for calling offensive plays during the games. Your strategy will not only determine the success of your football program or your season, but you will shape the future and legacy of your program. Ultimate College Football HC is completely free, has no ads, and is 100% playable offline. You can play on the go as you want and then when you want. And of course, we have a special offer for all of our Locked On UConn fans. Use the promo code Locked On CFB, all caps, inside the game store. You, you go go in there and receive a free bonus and boost to your game. Make sure to take advantage of this perk, as it will get your team off to a strong start. To download the game, just visit ultimate-cfb.com, ultimate-cfb.com, or look it up in the app stores. Hey, UConn fans, don't miss out on the next big game. Download the Game Time app for your last-minute ticket deals at unbeatable prices. It's fast, easy, and with the Game Time guarantee, you're getting the best price if you're going to go to the UConn game at Duke this weekend. Take a look at that. It's in Durham, close by me. I can't go because, obviously, my wife is about to give birth any minute. But prices are as low for great seats. I'm talking 50-yard line, maybe 15 rows up, tops, $23. But here's the best part. Fantastic. Go go look at those. Get fantastic views of your of the of the seats. And there's the best part is you can save $20 on a $23 ticket 
on your first order when you use the promo code Locked On College at checkout. So don't wait. Download the Game Time app and grab your tickets. Save today. Go Huskies. And you're back on Locked On UConn. Had to pay some bills there. Sorry about that. Non-conference schedule has been released. And I'll be the first to say, we're not playing too many difficult teams. Those are called buy games for everybody that is unaff unaffiliated with how, how college basketball works. And the better you are, the easier it is to get people to come and play you at your home spot. So, and this is n no different than the stuff that Jim Calhoun did. You know, I did... Uh, did a show on the 1998-99 national championship team, and you look at the the teams they played early on, Quinnipiac, um, you know, local squads. This year it's Sacred Heart, New Hampshire, Lemoyne, Texas A&M Commerce. Didn't even know that was a team, but that's okay. Um, UMES, it's an HBCU. Uh, I think it's University of Maryland Eastern Shores is the is the name. Um, and then listen, they're playing Baylor in Texas non-conference and they're playing Gonzaga neutral site Texas on the road Baylor at home um so one true home game four by games one neutral site and of course the big one the Maui Invitational where they're going to play three quality NCAA tournament teams whether they win or lose so that's 11 games I joked around I said when I think the field of 68 put out you know what's what's UConn's record in their non-conference and I just hashtagged it everything because you kind of doesn't say, well, you know, like, you know, you know how sportscasters in the back of the day will said, you know, Yankees and Red Sox are going on a road trip and, um, you know, such and such a team has to go eight and two on this road trip. This is college basketball, man. There is absolutely no reason you can't, cannot, can, can't go 11 or no in non-conference. Do I think that's going to happen mm, with the newer team, you know, having to gel and everything? Probably not. Um, I know for one thing, they're going to beat all of their bye games. They're going to beat Sacred Heart. Maryland ball Eastern Shores, New Hampshire, Lemoyne or Lemon and Texas AM Commerce. Um, I could see them going two and one in the Maui, but I, I don't and, and and I Texas doesn't scare me, Baylor doesn't scare me. I think they're talented teams. I think Jeremy Roach makes them a quality team because he's going back to playing point guard. Did you see that Goodman interview with him where he essentially said that Duke didn't want him back? I mean, he said he wanted to go back and they just couldn't come to an agreement. So uh if, if Duke struggles this year with leadership, especially at the point guard position, um, that's going to be shocking to me that that Baylor was able to get Jeremy Roach when he legitimately wanted to go back to Duke. Um, but hey, that's here nor there. This isn't locked on college basketball. This is locked on UConn. Um, but again, that, that's just wild to me. Um, Gonzaga is a better team this year, but they're still Gonzaga. I feel like they, they, they have the same hiccups that you know we had a long time ago when we were playing big, bigger teams like it was like we have to earn their respect and Gonzaga just hasn't uh earned our respect because we typically beat them and beat them like a drum uh in in bigger games so that especially at Madison Square Garden we went on the road last year to Seattle and, and kicked their kicked their tails by 13 14 points so I, I just don't see them coming to um store south and 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 having any any success against UConn so um I think there's a chance they go. We go 11 or no in non-conference. I think there's there's probably a higher likelihood we're 10 and one, and pick a game against Baylor or Texas where they lose. I think I think we will lose one of the the Texas games, uh, one of those the state of Texas, right? Uh, and so that's highly likely it would it would be on the road against in Austin. But you know, think about it. Last year they they went to Kansas and lost a close game. A couple guys were hurt, etc. Um, I think they take a lot of these early non-conference games as rotation setters for their team are they going to go 10 11 deep uh, and dan hurley's going to kind of change that historical rotation process that he's gone through or is he going to really find the seven or eight maybe nine guys that he thinks are legit you know 20 to 25 minute guys 15 to 25 minute guys and just you know keep everybody fresh i think i think i'm leaning towards he's going to figure out a nine eight nine man rotation um but who knows uh, I feel like Dan Hurley is also superstitious. He can start playing the hot hand, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I think the non-conference schedule is is what it is. It's not super challenging, but the Big East is. And I've I've been a a huge, you know, hater, if you will, for for teams like Duke, teams like Kansas, who really don't leave their home 
state until it's conference time. Um, tough to do that now with conference realignment, uh, but I really do feel unless they're playing a tournament. So I, I would love to see more home at homes like they scheduled with Texas, like, um, you know, UConn has tried to schedule in the past. I remember last year after the Kansas game, um, <laughs> uh, Jim uh, uh, Dan Hurley was in a press conference talking about how the Bryant coach called him out for not scheduling them this year. And, you know, he was just like, Did they, didn't they lose today or something like that? So he was being facetious with that and sarcastic. And, and I loved it. But it was just one of those things where um, they then they started asking him about um, – He's like, this is what college basketball needs more of is kind of these home at homes. He's like, we want to play everybody. And so, you know, we want to play. And he did mention Duke. He mentioned other play, other other things. And they asked him, oh, so Duke didn't want to play you guys. He said, we're, we're available. Like, you know, like they, they can call us and we'll figure something out. So um, I think there was some BS about how, you know, Danny Hurley didn't want to play Duke. It's like, come on, guys. We're not at that level anymore. You know what I mean? Like we're we're not running from anybody, um, and I don't think we ever were. That's the whole point. Like think of the think of the coaches we've had: Jim Calhoun, Kevin Ollie, um, and and now Danny Hurley. Did any of those guys strike you as afraid of a private school out of North Carolina or anybody or or Kansas or UNC or you know Texas or Baylor or any of these teams? They're they're not. You know, we play in the Big East, playing a tough conference. You know. I know there's all the, you know, scuttlebutt about the Big 12, and I think that's something that will happen in the future. I truly believe that that will happen, and it, it'll be a sad day because, let's be honest, the Big East is prepared UConn for the six championships that we have. Minus, I guess you could say minus the one when we were in the American, but the tenants are still there. Uh, this has always been a Big East school um, in terms of the basketball, and – don't fact check me on that. I know exactly. I'm I'm 100% wrong that it's always been in the Big East. But what I'm saying is is that the idea of UConn out of the Big East doesn't it doesn't feel right. And and I know that you guys have voiced your displeasure with some of the Big 12 stuff or, you know, ACC and, you know, or creating a new conference and all that stuff. And trust me, I I I think that that would be a, a rough patch for UConn fans. But I think it's for the betterment of the, the program as a whole. So, um, but I digress, right? This non conference schedule, I would give it a C. Plus. It is not super challenging, but with a brand new team coming in, essentially uh, meshing together, transfers, freshmen, three returning uh, quality players, you know, five other players that are returning that are essentially question marks, maybe with the exception of Jalen Stort being a, a big contributor in moments last year and then solo ball as well. But you got still got a lot of doubling down on solo on Jaden and Ross on Singari, um, you know, to, uh, to, to truly be throwing like a gauntlet of road games or, you know, big time competition, I think would be a mistake uh, because they're going to get challenged enough in conference and with the Maui and with the, the three high profile games that they have uh, outside of that. And the, in the five by games are will serve its purpose. So, um, but let's talk about the absolute, absolute gangster <laughs> OG flex from Dan Hurley, Kamani Young, and Luke Murray in the recruiting world. I'll give you some updates there coming up after this. You've heard us talk about FanDuel. There they are. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have a little something different for you now. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week three, three week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket. Guys, for YouTube TV, and, and, you, and I've had Direct TV and YouTube TV, YouTube TV is by far better for Sunday ticket. By you know, it, it leaps and bounds ahead of what Direct TV did. All you need to do is have a YouTube TV base pat plan. You'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment. And you can cancel anytime. As you guys know, I'm a display, a, 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 a uh, transplanted northerner now in the South watching Giants games that make me sad. But we still we still watch our teams whether they win or lose. And if that's not enough, be sure to check out FanDuel's Profit Boost in the app and use it for FanDuel's Double Your Winnings for all Sunday, 9-15. So that's this coming Sunday. Pre-game money line bets. Profit Boost will be starting Thursday. Actually, it starts tom tomorrow. So Thursday, Thursday night game, view your account page now to learn more about your boost. 
Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sportsbook. Go get your money, guys. Okay, you're back on the last segment of Locked on UConn. UConn's recruiting flex uh, have kind of reached epic proportions. A um, lot of pictures of the guys in suits going to high schools and gyms to visit two very high-profile recruits that are high on their list. Um, following their celebration with sitting president Joe Biden, Hurley and his staff went straight back to work on the recruiting trail. They made visits to two. Some people have them as four-star. Some entities have them at five-stars. So I'm going to call them four-and-a-half-star recruits, Caden Lewis and Eric Reby, both rising stars with UConn, and both have had official visits. UConn has them high on their radar at this stage in their career. Also, Kamani Young made a special trip to Dar see Darius Adams, who they also are high on. So all of the talk lately has been about what will Malik Thomas do? Are they going to pivot to Caden Lewis, um, Eric Reby, uh, Nico Bondalo? Um, I really I do. I have this strong feeling, guys, and I, this is not coming from a source. This is not coming from anything other than the fact that they are going to, that they're doing all of this extra work on top of doing what they have to do for their, their current team that just won a national championship for a second time in a row. Every, everything they do is for a purpose. And they are setting themselves up for a, I don't want to say larger than normal class. I could see them getting four guys. Who's to say they won't? It's it's one of those things where I think we were talking about two or three with Sam Lance. And I think that's been my prevailing uh, thought as well. But it, it wouldn't hurt. They still have that one extra scholarship. They haven't filled it with like a developmental player. So... It wouldn't surprise me if they went that route because the COVID years are over now. So it's going to be a little harder to get, you know, grad transfers and, um, and some older players to kind of come over for that last year there, you know, and it's funny, it's like that last payday or that last run for a ring. Uh, it's funny that we talk about that in college basketball again now, but it just, I think this move just sends like a really strong message that UConn's commitment to staying at the top of college basketball doesn't stop at celebrating championships. I, I think that really, resonates and i saw adam zagoria tweet it i saw aaron torres tweet it like it, it's just there's no other way to say it but it's 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 a pitch that no one else has so i don't you know i don't get into it with as many people as i used to on twitter but i remember a month ago when i, I dropped that um deal about malik essentially you know souring or they're you know they're He's, he's with overtime elite, and maybe he's asking for more money, whatever. Whatever the case is, UConn is UConn. And if you want to come here, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna spend time with you. They're going to go out of their way to see you they, because they want you. But the bottom line is, I mean, do you want to do you want to do cool stuff like this? I was about to say cool shit. But do they, do they want do you want to do cool stuff like this and go to the White House after you win a third straight national championship as a freshman? Do you want to, um, you know, do you want to go to uh, an Arkansas where you're just going to kind of go into <laughs> not necessarily oblivion because, you know, John, John Calipari is going to have them going, but essentially just a, it's a, it's a second tier program right now. It just is. It's got a lot of building to do. Just not, you're not going to poof magic wand. Like, I think that's what's so crazy what people think like just because Arkansas has got a bunch of good guys coming in, they still have to gel. This, this isn't a team that's been playing together. And Calipari hasn't hasn't been to a Final Four in years. He's been out of the first weekend over the last how many years now? That certainly was last year with with the number three and four pick in the draft. Probably wrong on that, but I know, I know they both went top ten. Um, it's just one of those things, man. Like you you know, this isn't the NBA. You have to build a culture. So, but let's dive into this recruiting. Right? They went they went out. You had Kamani going. Uh, to a solo trip for for Darius Adams, they have a good relationship. Akeem Lewis, six foot three guard, was visited by Hurley at Sidwell Friends in, in Washington D.C. Lewis considering UConn along with Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina. But this was his quote: "The White House is a place not many people will ever get to visit, and for UConn, they've done it to, twice these past two years, which is super impressive." Yeah, we feel like that too, Akeem. Feel, feel free to come to UConn, my man. I really appreciate them coming out and showing love when they didn't have to. 
Did you hear that? They didn't have to go. They're UConn. They could have went back to stores and said, yeah, man, let us know, especially with my visit and stuff coming up. This dude is on his way for a visit. They could have said, see you there. But instead, they said, we're going to come see you because we really want you. We appreciate you. That tells me everything I need to know about how much they want this kid. And it, I, if, if he doesn't pick UConn, I, I don't know what, what more would you want. Um, I have a picture of Eric Riby that I can't show on here, but um, that of, of him just for copyright purposes and all that stuff um, of him with the coaching staff. And my only question would be is why is Luke Murray not wearing his suit? Um, I'm sure you guys can find it. It's him. And I think it's at his high school. Um, he just completed an official visit. They went and checked in on him. Um, they, they, he, dropped, he dropped by the uh, Bullis school in Potomac, Maryland. So Reby has also been courted by top tier schools. We've talked about them. Creighton, Indiana, Kansas. And I've heard Oregon is sniffing around. I don't know if there's an official visit there. Um, I know he enjoyed Kansas. Uh, Indiana, I don't think is in the, is truly in the mix for him. That's more Braylon Mullins. But there is a significant interest in Eric Reby, and I think he is a phenomenal fit for UConn and what they do. This is incredible dedication by this Husky coaching staff, which we love. And you know, obviously, you just throw the all of the the stuff about Hurley turning down, um, uh, Hurley turning down the the Lakers job a while back. But um, the flex here is clear. While other programs are competing for recruits, UConn is leveraging both recent success, two national championships in the last two years, and Hurley's loyalty to build their future by turning down the Lakers. So you don't have to worry about him job hopping. Can you say that about any other coach? Who is the uh, who's the only other coach you could probably say that about? Bill Self, maybe? Tom Izzo? Probably say that about those two. Anybody else? I just learned that, you know, Shaka Smart thinks Marquette's his dream job, so... Maybe not Shaka. So, like, there's like four or five guys that you can pretty much count on. They're not leaving for the NBA or another college team. Everybody else, Mark Pope just got to Kentucky, but they go through head coaches like, you know, butter through a hot knife. If it's not going to, if it's not happening, they'll get rid of them. They gave Calipari some, some run because of the, the type of players he was bringing in and the, and the, the money that was coming in. So, the flex is, is clear here. This is the type of types of moves that keeps the Huskies positioned for a three-peat and shows why they're recruiting powerhouse kids, but to their point, recruiting the right kids because the most the majority of these kids get it. They're not chasing just the almighty dollar. So really appreciate the program here. Um, and what I will tell you is, UConn is poised to 3 Pete, and we're going to continue to cover it. Stay tuned. Tomorrow, we will have the latest Husky in the transfer portal, Aiden, Aiden Mahaney, talking about his, his process of getting to UConn, potentially the culture shock of being in stores, of being a, a West Coast kid, and we'll have some fan questions for him too. So this has been another episode of Locked on UConn. I'm your host, Mark Zanetto, asking you to stay locked in, stay connected, make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And before we go and say go Huskies, make sure you check out Spencer McLaughlin on the College Football Podcast here on Locked On Locked On Podcast Network. Everything you need to know about the college football world, NIL, conference realignment, who's going to make the college football playoff. My wife's Tennessee Vols are looking pretty solid. But again, this has been another episode of Locked On UConn. Go Huskies.